All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. I am the Virginia Bushcrafter. I it is glad I'm glad to see everyone that I can actually finally put a face to a name. Excellent. Fire is one of the most important things. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. Now, when we speak of fire, we know it consists of five components. It consists of combustion. You have to have a way to start a fire. And my favorite method is a fair simrod. Uh, something that is going to throw sparks. This is my favorite, but there's also, there are many other ways. Uh, there is also flint and steel, which is basically Well, I don't have the flint with me, but it's a piece of flint. You take it and you hit it against something and you get sparks. So I don't have it in here with me. I thought I did. And of course, there's always a lighter and matches. But I prefer not to use a lighter and matches until that is the last resort. If, I, if I'm separated from a, a fair simrod or uh, uh, flint and steel, I'm always going to carry a gear one, uh, which I will always have a fair sim rod with me. And again, my motto, one is zero, two is one. So this is just basically something that is also going to give you sparks. So now, one of, the, one of the things that I talk about a lot is the cutting tools. Now, a lot of the tools, there is always some type of redundancy. My favorite tool is a hatchet. I'm going to use this for splitting logs. Now, some people may choose to use a knife, but my preference is a hatchet. The next thing I'm going to use is a knife. And there are classifications of knives. Four inches and below is a small knife. Four to six is a medium. Seven to 10 is a large. I prefer a large knife to assist me with batani. And I'll go through that as well. And the next thing I'm gonna have with me is a saw. The reason I'm gonna have a saw is to cut wood to a specified length. So that's, these are my cutting tools. And I'm always going to have a smaller knife with a Scandinavian grind to assist me in carving and so forth. So redundancy, I'm not going to be without these four things in the bush. You will not catch me for any length of time without these four. Now. The next thing that you're going to need is some type of tender. So for purposes of this class, right here is some cattail. This is tender, cattail. Uh, in this bag, we picked some tinder yesterday. The drier, the better. As long as you can hear the crack, it's dry. This is good tinder. So, and again, tinder is one of the five components of fire. You're gonna have your combustion, your tinder, your kindling, um, let me see, there's uh, the large size, uh, got to call it the fuel. Fuel is like maybe wrist size or smaller. And the most important component, oxygen or air. So you need those five things to make a successful fire and to sustain that fire. So the first thing 
if you are in the bush, and you have just gotten there, the only thing you have is large logs. And when you're in the bush, you're not gonna get those pretty logs like you see on YouTube. That nice, round, even thing, you're not gonna get it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But the first thing I'm gonna do is break this down by actually placing it as a brace for safety reason and here. And I'm gonna to hit toward the edge. So now I have that. So what I'm gonna do from this point, I am going to start I'm gonna start making some kindling by taking this and a baton So I'm going to do that several times until I get them small enough to start making feather sticks. Now the feather sticks, what I do is try to make them as thin as possible because the thinner they're going to catch quicker. So. I'm basically going to take my preference of a Scandinavian grind knife. Now Scandinavian grind basically has one bevel, one angle. Very easy to sharp, keep sharpening, and it is carbon steel. So what I do, I start from the tip of the knife, basically just land the bevel down. These are feather sticks. Now, it took me a lot of practice to do that. Now, usually this feather stick is even smaller. So this is part of tender. So with the choices of tender, I've got all of this. I've got cottontail. And the thing about it, when you make a fire, it's not a five minute process. You may see all of this here and there, but you have to have your materials prepared and ready to go. So this is just tinder that I'm gonna start a fire with. And that is also kindling. Kindling is something that is pencil size or smaller. Kindling, pencil size or smaller. So all of this can be used as kindling. And what I'm gonna to try to do is see if I can make a I really don't have enough something to make a bird's nest with, but using kindling, I have kindling, 
and tender. So what I'm going to do now, take a fair seam rod and strike it. Now, when I get some sparks that hit the tender or the, the kindling, I'm going to start adding the fuel. The fuel is things of this size. So, That quick we have fire. Now, the cattail burns very fast. Notice how the feather sticks are burning? Because they are thin. When, that, when the flames go above the kindling, I'm going to start that fuel. Just waiting for this to get larger. And I, when I put it on here, I put it in a crisscross method because fire likes confusion. Fire likes confusion. Now, with that fire going, and that's going pretty strong, there's a tool that I think I have with me called a bellow. And this bellow I don't think I have it with me. Let's see here. No, I don't have the bellow with me, but if you have a hard time starting this fire, here's where you add the fifth component, oxygen. If you don't have your bellow, which I do somewhere, take your hat off and you fan it. Or you blow it. Now this fire right here, this fire, thank you, thank you. This is a bellow, and basically what you do, you are providing oxygen, I call it high, high uh, octane. Yeah, and it is just basically it grows the fire. So this fire would not go out until I want it to go out. With all the wood here, I can run this fire for two days. Now, my thing is when I go into the bush, I'm sleeping three feet away from the fire. Fire adds security, serenity, and it's just, for me, such a beautiful thing to hear crackling and popping at one and two in the morning because I know I have built a sustainable fire. And I did that by, when I go to the bush, the first thing I do is build a shelter. After that, and I know I'm gonna be there all night, I'm harvesting wood. I'm going out, bringing wood, bringing wood, bringing wood. I may take a break. I got four hours of sunlight. I'm gonna get more wood, more wood. And then I'm going to process that wood bust it down and maybe an hour before darkness is when I'm going to make my fire because I want that fire to last all night. Now one of the things you're going to do with a fire, you're going to do some work, especially by, if you're by yourself, 
If your logs are not large enough, you're going to be feeding that fire. And even when your logs are large, I've had logs long as, uh, as, as wide as 14 inches. You're still going to feed that fire because it seems like the hotter it gets, it burns faster, and you've got, you're going to get coals. And eventually coals go out. So you have to continuously put more fuel onto that fire. Just like you continuously put gasoline into your car, you have to keep feeding that fire. So now, another thing with fire, that is all natural material. There are many other ways to make a fire and it is called do it yourself. Uh, one of the things you would be surprised that one of the great fire starters is hand sanitizer because it has alcohol in it. This is a great fire starter. Just put a little bit of it on your wood, strike your fair sim rod, and you're going to, the flames are going to be very, very light. In the daytime, you may not even be able to see the flames. But if you just put your hand over it or stick some uh, fuel or kindle in there, you're going to get a fire. Another one, which is great to start off with, is Vaseline and cotton balls. Now, this is again what I call line gear one. This stays on me the whole time. If I got to make a run and get away from my camp or I can't come back to my camp, I know I got material to start a fire. So, Vaseline and cotton balls. Now, in this plastic bag, there is bicycle tape, gorilla tape, a candle. It's all meshed with Vaseline. So, if you can't start a fire with this, I mean, you know, which you all can. In addition, you know, I'm carrying matches and a lighter. And again, I'm only gonna use matches and lighter as a last resort. That's if I am displaced or lost both of my ferro sim rods. And that's gonna be highly unlikely. So again, when it comes to bushcrafting, shelter, you must have shelter of some kind. If it's no more than the clothes on your back, carry a baby sack, uh, your tarp, your tent, natural materials, debris. Very, very important to have water. We've all heard we can go three days without water, and I'm sure we can. But I can assure you that second day, you're going to be like this. And that third day, you're going to be worse because your body's going to deteriorate. You're going to feel worse. Next thing, you have to keep putting calories into your body. It's a must. Yeah, you can go three weeks without it. Don't try it. I wouldn't advise it. And again, number four, you're not going to make it without this. I've been out in the bush going 90 degrees during the day. One o'clock in the morning, I'm three feet away from the fire. So... That's my little spill on fire. Uh, I encourage everybody, practice in your backyard. Go somewhere and just practice because I can assure you, when you go to the bush and try this your first time, it's not happening. It's very, very unlikely. I mean, I have spent so much time out there trying to get a fire started and finding out, you know what? My kindling, kindling is too, my tender is too moist. I find that out by Picking this up, putting it next to my face. If I feel any moisture, any coldness, it has moisture in it. So I'm not going to use that. Then I'm going to resort to my man-made tender. Cotton balls and Vaseline. Uh, another thing is fat wood. I carry shavings. And here is something, some of the best fire starter. Fatwood. It has resin in it. 
And this comes from a pine tree. If you go to a pine tree that has fallen and you go to one of the branches and the tree trunk and you saw it, you're going to get the fat wood. And fat wood has a lot. Of, it's going to smell like turpentine. And so that's a great fire starter. But also, if you go to the root of the tree, more than likely you're going to find fat wood. So um, let me see. Another good method is uh, jute twine. You can go to your local Dollar Tree or any store, get some jute twine, pull it apart, and this is some of the best tinder. But I mind you that this tinder burns very quickly. So you're going to have to have your kindling ready to go. So again, the importance of a fire, fire, have all your materials ready before you strike that ferrous simrod. All right, so I could go on and talk more and more and more and more about this, but I'm gonna leave you with this. Just go out in the bush, practice, and have some fun. So any questions? Whew. Use the, fire, the sweat yeah, to put the fire. Like, uh, water. <laughs> all right. Man, I didn't know if this, this hot, but uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, let me make sure this is out. 